Once again, all praise and glory to the Most High, power of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, giving all praise and glory to His holy name. Shabbat Shalom. As always, we're going to start off with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever that I do in word or deed, do all by Hashem or Mashiach, Yahweh giving thanks to the Most High and the Father, by Hashem or Mashiach, Yahweh So we give all praise and glory to the Most High. And we thank Him for everything, for He's worthy to be praised and thanks for everything that happens in this world. You know, the Spirit was moving me to, uh, to go into uh, infidelity. I'm going to read the definition of infidelity. 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 I imagine there's many uh, definitions. I'm just going to deal with The one I have here in this, um, I believe it's the American Heritage Dictionary. The American Heritage Dictionary. It says, we'll first look at infidel. It says, an unbeliever with respect to a particular religion, especially Christianity or Islam, one with no religious beliefs. Infidel, unfaithful. Unfaithful, infidelity, lack of fidelity or loyalty, lack of loyalty, especially to a spouse. It says lack of religious belief. Okay. So we're going to look at different aspects of infidelity. You know, a lot of times I uh, mention that. People are just going through formality and when we look up formality, let's see what we get from that word. Because it's very important that we believe in the most high and we, but we have to know how to serve him, how to believe in him, how to be faithful to him every day. And you can't make up your own way in your belief because it's already laid out. And a lot of you that's just coming in or you figure that you've been in this, try and come in and do it your own way when it's already been laid out. Formality, the quality or condition of being formal, it says rigorous or ceremonious adherence to rule, an established rule or custom. Formal says over involving outward form or structure, outward form or structure, but not inwardly. Remember, outwardly you seem to be following the proper way, but inwardly, or when the book is closed, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And there's no excuse for not knowing because there's no questions that you have to make sure you're on point. So you're on your own, doing whatever you want to do, so you better be on point. We got to be on point. Being or relating to essential form or constitution or formal principle, following accepted form or con conventions of formal education. 
marked by strict observance of, of forms, stiff or reserved formal matter, done for the state, sake of procedure only. I like that one. Done for the sake of procedure only, a formal requirement. Something such as a gown or social affair. Well, that's, that's something altogether different. We're not dealing with that. I like the one that says, done for for sake of procedure only, but not doing it in the spirit of how it's supposed to be done in the spirit so that it's not pleasing man or looking looking a certain way to man, but to the most high. You look, you look a certain way to the most high rather than just appearing before men like you are really into this, I'll give you a prime example. Everybody saying Bahashem, S-H-E-M, Yahweh Shai, or Bahashem, whatever name they call Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, when it should be Sham. And everybody following that, even to the point where I see somebody name their name, Bahashem Israel. You see, in the name of Israel. I mean, it ain't even in the name because Shem and Sham is altogether different. And you're just going by the formality of what you're hearing somebody say without doing any research to realize that you're not going to the most side with Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. Because Shem is our forefather. You got Shem, you got Ham, you got Japheth. And I explained this. And when you still do the same thing in error, over and over again, it's like you really don't see the spirit of what this is about. You see? It's very important. Very, very important. Because when you look at John, first chapter of the 10th verse, it says he came, he, he, he was in the world, the world was made by him, the world knew him not, the world of Israel. And my check up shot was in the world of Israel. He made the world, and the world of Israel knew him not. Like a lot of you don't know him now. To understand spiritually what it is that is coming out spiritually from the spirit of the most high. And I challenge any of you on what I'm saying now. Because it's very, very important. You can't take this lightly. We in the last days, it's a last stance. That we got to stand before the kingdom. And here it is, y'all playing around. He said he came into his own, his own received him not. That's where the Christians stop right there. In verse 11, but verse 12 says, But as many as received him, gave he power. Anytime you see power, that's spiritual power to become the sons of the Most High. Just as a Mashiach Yavashai is a son of the Most High. But it says, even to them, this is a condition. Even to them that believe on his name, or Bahasham, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, not Bahashem, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, but Sham is name up, not Shem. So, in no matter what language you're trying to go to outside of our Hebrew language, it's not working with you. He said, No man come to the Father but by me. See, that's just formality. You're just going through it. You're doing, you're doing exactly what you hear people without even questioning is, are you right or wrong? You're hearing that you're wrong and you still do the same thing. You're just going through formality. You're just going, a lot of you just following whatever it is you've been uh, made up yourself or you never really was under the uh, elders of old or those that brought forth the Hebrew of old. So you learning under somebody else. You're just hearing what they say like a parrot. You hear what they say and you're repeating it. Just going through the motions. Spiritually, you're not really seeing this. And that's the only way. How you become the son of the most high. And you're not going to the most high. But in your mind you are because you following suit with someone that's telling you to listen to them. Because they're a leader or they whoever they are and they're 
saying it wrong. Just that one instance, but it's many instances. We're going to go through it. Many instances where you're going to see that um, infidelity co covers a lot. It covers a lot because you, you have to know spiritually how to please the Most High and not because anything you do that shows that you're unfaithful, how's it going to work for you when you don't believe in him? But you say you believe in him, outward appearance, but inwardly, you are not. You don't really see this because you ain't really took, you ever, haven't taken the aspect of, it's more than just saying a saying. This ain't no saying. That's not a saying. That's something how we reach the most high. So are you going to the most high? In your mind you are. But you've been told. And you're stiff-necked and hard-headed and rebellious and don't want to hear the truth. Don't want to adhere, I say, to the truth. Let's look at it. Infidelity. First and foremost, look at our numbers. 15. Numbers 15. Did y'all realize it's a sign of showing that you don't believe in the Most High? Disbelief in the Most High? Yeah. Numbers 15 and 30. But the soul that doeth art presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproachful reproaches the Most High. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Hear what he said? Let me read to you again. But the soul that doeth art presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, of Israel, the same reproaches the Most High. You you disgraces the Most High, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he have despised the word of the Most High and have broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off; his iniquity shall be upon him. It's serious, and it's real. Like I say, let's go to the New Testament. Hebrews 10.26. Hebrews 10.26. That's why we have to know what we know and follow what we know that is correct. But if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, once you've been told, you take it lightly, you tell most of think, oh, you, you playing with me, huh? Okay. Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain of no more sacrifice for sins. For my sake, I'm shy not going to your, on your behalf to the most high. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment, that's coming. He coming to judge and make war. And fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Now, it's not just, I just gave you an example initially, but it's, it's many things that you've been told, you've been warned, you keep doing the same thing over and over again. You can't keep saying a just man fall seven times and rises up again. That's the one, you, you already know what's right. So here it is, you coming again, doing the same thing over and over again. No, you got to change. See, 2 Corinthians 517 says this. This is what you're supposed to be like. Put my body say, okay, well, okay. You've been given mercy and grace. And some of you don't give no mercy and grace to nobody. You hate your people. There ain't no mercy and grace to no one. You hold on to grudges. You hate you just hating for no reason at all. No reason to be hating your brother or your sister, but you still hating. Listen. Therefore, if any man, this is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, Yahweh was shy, or Bahashama Mashiach, Yahweh was shy, therefore, any man be Bahashama Mashiach, Yahweh was shy, because Bah is in. How are you in Mashiach? You know, his name just said his name. 
It's not power. The power is when he said, no man come to the Father but by me. And he said in St. John, that was St. John 14, 6. And then St. John 14 and 13 said, you ask anything, Baha Shama, Mashiach, in the name of the Lord and Savior, I would do it, that the Father could be glorified in the Son. That's the power. That's how you get to the Most High. It ain't nothing new because there wasn't no New Testament written when he said that to the apostles that only had the law and the prophets. Get this straight, just like we're reading here. Therefore, if any man be Baha Shaw Mashiach Yahweh he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So you're not Baha Shaw Mashiach Yahweh Shah. You still hold to the same thing. But it says old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, including yourself. You see? That's why Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's, that's when you become a new creature. When you renew your mind and you act different. So whoever knew you of the past, you're not the same person. And be not confounded to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. What is that? One of the uh, Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore, the law is good, is holy, excuse me, and the commandment holy and just and good. So that's what's good to the both sides, that you keep his commandments as we're looking at them. We got to go over and show you how this is the right way to be. Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles, go to Second Chronicles 32. And see how are you gonna how are you gonna know what's right if you haven't really heard what's right, and when you hear what's right, you gotta adhere to it. I do. When I hear what it is that is coming out that I've learned is a review continually, is the word of the most high. Infidelity. See when you when you sin, you know, knowing that you're doing something wrong, you sinning against the most high, because it's his laws. There are his laws. Um Look what the Most High says. Second um, Chronicles, we'll say thirty-two. And let's see what uh, the King of Assyria told told us through Hezekiah in Second Chronicles thirty-two and eleven. Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die? By famine and by thirst, saying, The Most High, our power, shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Hath not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall worship before one altar, and burn incense upon it. Know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all the people of other lands? How they beat them down and took them, took them over? Were the gods of the nations of those lands any ways able to deliver their lands out of my hand? That's real prideful, right? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers, my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand? That your God and your power should be able to deliver you out of my hand? Now therefore, let not Hezekiah deceive you nor persuade you on this matter, neither yet believe him. 
For no God, no power of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of mine hand and out of, thy, out of the hand of my fathers. How much less shall your power, Yahweh, deliver you out of mine hand? And the servant spake yet more against the Most High Power and against his servant Hezekiah. He wrote also letters to rail on the Most High Power of Israel. You know, he, he wrote letters to rail on the Most High Power of Israel. Like some of you out there railing on our power as the 12 tribes of Israel, our power, Yahweh. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the power of our forefathers, who became the name of Israel, who became the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. He wrote also letters to Rail, verse 17, on the most high power of Israel, and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. Then they cried. This was always. We always done this. And the result was always a victory from the Most High. Listen. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jew speech in Hebrew unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall to a fright them and to trouble them that they might take the city and they spake against the God the power of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth which were the work of the hands of man and for this cause Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven cried to the most high you know as I was telling you as we was going through our fast last fast we got to cry to the most high for our deliverance out of this present wicked world. And the Most High sent an angel. Listen. We cried to the Most High. The power of, see, I tell you in Psalm 96 and 5, all the gods of the nation, for all the gods of the nation are idols. Not our power. Listen. And the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's his name forever, more to all generations, power of Israel, sent an angel. One angel which cut off all the mighty men of valor, cut off all his mighty men. And the leaders and captains in the camp of the kings of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he was coming to the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. They killed him. That's the most high. He killed him. Put him to death. You gonna talk about our power? Our power who we serve? Oh yeah, he put him to death. Thus the most high saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherim, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every way. See? And many brought gifts unto the most high power to Jerusalem in presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah. So that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth, from henceforth. See, the Most High sent an angel. He always sent an angel. He always sent angels or angel. That's our power. And that's the belief and the faith. These are examples that we have to show us what we have to do. And nobody can stop this. As long as you have a mind to know that you have, we have the power of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He said he only know us as the Israelites. You see these other nations, he, they just, he just came and wiped them out because all the gods of the nations are idols. They sitting there before some dang on Buddha or some before some idol or some they done made up, whatever. Have no power. But our power is the power of powers. <laughs> yes. Look at Isaiah 26. Go to the book of Isaiah 26. No, no, no. 29. Isaiah 29. Isaiah the 29th chapter. Let's look at that. Isaiah 29. We're dealing with infidelity. If you got to look at it, 
believing in him, not believing in him. All right, do you have faith? You believe faith is belief. See, let's look at faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. So you understand, either you really believe or you don't believe, or you're just going through the motions and acting like you do, but you don't because there's no results. You gotta, you're just supposed, you're supposed to get results from what you, this, 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 the, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're supposed to be getting results from it. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, do you see the most high? When I say you see the most high. You see a Mashiach Yahushua? No, you don't. But, we are supposed to believe. Even though we haven't seen him. You see? That's what's so powerful. To him. They look at wow. Y'all realize we're talked about. We're talked about as a people. Right here. Look at uh the book of Second Ezra is an apocrypha, the first chapter. And verse 35. It says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. Us now. Which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. To whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do that. I have commanded them, keeping the commandments of the Most High. No signs like he showed, like we can read about all the things that he done. In our past, as Israelites, our forefathers, we haven't seen the same thing. And some never seen any signs at all. I've seen different signs, different things that he, he, he only the Most High could have done that I'm still here before you to be able to speak at all. Living at all. Only the Most High have come through where I'm here living before you. It says, they have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Knowing, only way you're going to know how to acknowledge your sins is to know what is right from wrong in the laws that commands of the Most High. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Grace is getting something that you don't deserve of we, the Israelites, that was to come. And we hear now. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though they have not seen me, since like I say, we believe in something that's not seen. That's the most high. That's the Mashiach Yahweh Shah. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit, to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High, they believe the thing that I say. See, that's us. Look at First Peter's the first chapter. Um, look at First Peter's the first chapter. Verse seven. That the trial of your faith, First Peter's one and seven. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perishes. It is. The trial of our belief in the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is more precious than gold that's going to perish. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Though you go to a lot in this truth. But you know that he's not a man he should lie. And that you're going to receive praise and honor and glory at the appearing of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's what it's all about. And have an opportunity to live forever 
see immortality, eternal life. Whom have we not seen? So here it is, as we just read. Have we not seen? Ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, having strong faith, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. See? Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, man. Powers and authority that's coming to us. Guaranteed. Promise. It's going to happen because Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Kingdom has to be set up. He's going to reign for a thousand years. And he's going to reign forever. After the thousand years, the most high going to be all in all forever and ever and ever of which salvation the prophets listen with salvation that powers from the rulership and authority that's salvation the prophets of the old testament have inquired and searched diligently because they want it in their time like everybody does Who's prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Hear that? Same thing we just read in the Apocrypha. The grace that should come to you. Searching what? Or what matter of time the spirit of Amashiach Yahushai, which was in them, uh-oh, did signify. Uh-oh. Wait a minute now. Searching what? Or what matter of time the spirit of Amashiach Yahushai? The spirit of Amashiach Yahushai? Which was in them, did signify, uh oh, the spirit of Amashiach Yahushua was in the Old Testament. That the prophets of the Old Testament, they was rolling with the spirit of Amashiach Yahushua. So, how does anybody don't believe in him? You don't understand him because he comes in the volume of the book, is written of him. Hmm. So, they was rolling with the spirit of Amashiach Yahushua, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand, the sufferings of Amashiach. And the glory that should follow. You see? But the prophets had the spirit of a Mashiach. So he said, no man ever seen the Father. But he was an angel. He was a spirit. <laughs> that's powerful. And that's what we got to look at. Let's go to Isaiah 29. The 29th chapter. I mean, he created everything. And these are the things, some things that's missing in the spirit. And people saying what they're saying, but not realizing the importance of what this word is saying. It's like we just read. The prophets had the spirit of a Mashiach. How do they have the spirit of a Mashiach if he didn't exist? Until... He came in the flesh. Because people want to believe. He existed from the beginning. The first creation of the Most High. Look at... Uh, Isaiah 29, and we're going to look at verse 15 first and foremost. Isaiah 29 and 15. Woe me destruction unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Most High. See, it says destruction to you that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Most High. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who see of us? And who know of us? You know how people be like, you don't see me. You don't see me. Infidelity. So we looking at. They be like, you don't see me. But not knowing that they're being seen. Very much so. And they're so afraid that 
you will see them in the light of who they are when the book is closed, when they're, a lot of you don't know nobody, you don't really know people, you just know of them. You're not around them when the book is closed enough to be able to know how they really are. You can't just assume they're a certain way, even with myself, you can't assume I'm a certain way. Because you're hearing what I'm bringing forth as I ask the both sides to bring the Holy Spirit to bring forth His Word. It's about how you apply this in your life. When this book is closed, you're living in your life. Living your life. That's what it's all about. But Ecclesiastes 23 and 19, it says, Such a man only fear the eyes of men. That's why I say you don't, want to, you don't see me. That's why he said what? What he said? You don't see me. What did it say? Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Most High. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Because they don't think about the Most High. Remember they ain't? They done forgot about the Most High. They have disbelief in the Most High. No matter how it comes across, at all times, 24-7, this ain't something you change. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to be hearing this, learning this, and live it and apply it in your life. Period. When the book is closed, you're like, who see it? Ain't nobody see me, so now they do wicked stuff. Then they get busted, then they all apologize. Y'all got to keep saying, you know, a just man fall in seven times. No, you can't be doing that so so uh, pre presumptuously. And think it's okay. It's not okay. You can't keep falling on doing the same thing over and over and over again and say it's okay. It ain't okay. We just read it. It's what we started with. Listen. Such a man only feared the eyes of men. Ecclesiastes 39, no, 20, 23 and 19. So lucky. Such a man only feared the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Most High are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. You see? Well, so I see everything. 10,000 times brighter than the sun? Going back to Isaiah 29 and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. But shall the work say to of him that made it, he made me not? You gonna say to the most high, he don't see you? He see what you're doing. He made me not. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he have not he have not he have no understanding? How you gonna say this? What are you saying to you? So I say his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. That's why you got to think of him. You don't think of him, you don't believe in him. If you don't think about what you're doing, the consequences from the most high, then you don't believe in him. Like he can't touch you. That's why he say nobody see me because he's not here that you can see him. But he is there watching everything we do. He sees everything. That's why I say nothing you're getting away with. But see, all people think, oh, because man is not around to see you. When the most high see it, he sees everything. Then there's a lot of people think, oh, just because you're not in his presence to see the wickedness that you're doing and not, not believing in the most high. But look at, uh, since his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, look at what he does. Once he sees what you do, in Amos 3 and 7, It's amazing how, you know, I've, I've, at least in my life, I've experienced the operations of how all of this works together in exactly what he says he's, he's going to do. Like Amos 3 and 7. Surely the most high power 
will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You know? He revealeth his secret unto his servants who are the children of Israel, the prophets. So, when you in the spirit with him, he revealed his secrets. Remember, his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, so he's watching everything that man does. So ain't nothing really in secret. Because the secret things you're doing, those are the secret things that the Most High see. And once he sees it, he reveals it to his servants, who are the Israelites, the prophets. So now, how's he do it? Job 33, 14. <clears throat> Job 33 and 14. For the most high speaking once, yea, twice, yet man perceive it not. And a, this I does it. This I reveal his secrets. A lot of times, or sometimes he'll just blatantly expose people right in front of you when they're in your face. <clears throat> or they think you don't see them. Like I said, like we just read, they think, oh, they don't see me. Nobody see me. And when they do things, sometimes they do things like brothers do things in the dark. They think brothers don't know what they're doing. He even revealed it to them. And they got to pay. You got to pay. It says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumbers upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. He showed it to you. That's how he does it. That he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. See? He opened up your understanding to visions and dreams and so forth. Once he see the secret, he see his eyes 10,000 times brighter than the sun. To reveal these things to us. <clears throat> and look. And see the Most High blesses. He blesses. And he brings down. He bring you down. Let's go to the book of... Uh, Deuteronomy 32. We're looking at all different aspects of infidelity. And a lot of times when Israel was, was made to be living large, just what we did. The Most High was blessing us abundantly, and that's what happens with people. They, you know, He, he bless them, they be prosperous, and that's so you know, they, they don't believe in the most high. They think they got it on their own. How easily it is to forget. He make it poor, he make it rich. Be prosperous, some people. But this could be their only, only consolation that they have is in this world. After this is the judgment, and they die. And be cast into the punishment laid up for them. You don't want to be there. Look at uh, Matthew 6 and 19. So lay not your let say lay Matthew six and nineteen. We're gonna go back to Deuteronomy. It say lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. When you sow into your money, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So where your mind is at, 
and seeking after money, 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 that's where your mind is at. And he don't want you to actually, you know, be thinking of that. Let's get a prime example. Go to Deuteronomy 32nd chapter and 15. Deuteronomy 32 and 15. But Zezeron, which is another name for we the 12 tribes of Israel, wax fat. When you wax fat, you know, you live in large. Prosperity is all upon you. And kick, kicking it. You know, that's, we say kicking it now, but in kick. Back then you say you wax fat, man, you fat, and you kicked. I mean, you kicking it. Thou art waxing fat. It's hip talk. You know, living large. You fat, you large. You you eating good. You got the best of everything. You got money. You know. How nice house, nice cars. A lot of money. Thou art grown thick. Ain't no famine if you're growing thick. You eating good. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the most high which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. You see? Once the most high blessed even to this day. That's why I tell you it's harder for a rich man into the kingdom of heaven and a rich woman than a camel to go through the eye of a needle, a little archway, a little archway in Israel. To enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because that camel ain't going to want to get down and put that, going to think he's going to get stuck. His hump going to get stuck in that little arch where it's hard to get through. They provoked him to jealousy, verse 16, with strange gods, strange idols. Like the idols of these other nations. Remember, all the gods of the nations are idols. With abominations provoked him to, provoked they him to anger. See, they're sacrificing the devils, not to the most high. To gods or the idols whom they knew not. To new gods or idols that came newly up. Like these different religions that people are following today. Whom your fathers feared not. You see? Ain't no nothing about that. You show me where Moses knew about the Catholic, the Baptist, the show with any of these different religions that we're dealing with now. For the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. And that rock is a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. To the glory of the Most High. Because we Mashiach him. We ain't just become Mashiach him because it's written in 1 Corinthians 3.23. We're Mashiach him here from the beginning to the end. But Mashiach Yahweh Shai is our king. He ain't just became our king. He's been our king. Through the power of the Most High. You understand? The rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and have forgotten the most high that formed thee. See? Because you act like it's not, he has nothing to do with it. And when the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob saw it, he abhorred them. He hated us because of provoking of his sons and of his daughters, teaching them the wrong thing, the wrong way, as it is today. So you think he loved you and you teaching them, teaching the, the, the sons and daughters, little children, the wrong way? Why am I saying I'm sorry? Stuff for little children come to me. You got to, you got to be like a child to enter into the kingdom of heaven because you're supposed to be, they're supposed to be taught and they're able to be taught. They're like a sponge. They'll take it in. And here you are, wicked as ever, just playing with it. Going through formality, going through the, the procedure on the out, outwardly, but inwardly you ain't even there. Because you don't take it serious enough. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children of whom is no faith. There it is. Don't believe in him. Take it or leave it. That's just what he's telling us know. That you really don't have no faith. Because outwardly you seem to be a certain way. But inwardly, you'll say in a minute, it don't matter. It don't, that don't matter. Listen to our people. Listen to what they say. You say it in all different facets of life. When you're told this is right, what y'all say? Oh, it don't matter. That don't matter. 
and you're just going through it, and you have other people, you lead other people the wrong way. Don't you know that's a price to pay people? You don't fear the most high. You can't be afraid of them. That's why they they have moved me to jealousy. You can you can you imagine what he, he said? You moved him to jealousy. You moved him to, to be jealous. Y'all ever seen a tornado? <laughs> you can look at it on TV. Uh, a hurricane. Y'all hear what I'm saying? An earthquake. Storms like they have in California. Where you bring houses down from the mountain. They come tumbling down. They had a whole freeway fall out here. Just collapsed. Hmm. Better recognize people. Look at our, uh, hold that, get Exodus 34 and 14. But thou shalt worship no other God, no other entity, no other idol, no other God, only the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But thou shalt worship no other God, for the most high whose name is jealous, excuse me, is a jealous power. Unless ye make a covenant, with the inhabitants of the land, which a lot of you have done, it's even in your mind. I'll say your mind, been, your, brain, your brain has been polluted because how do you think? You think the same way you've been programmed to think. That's why you have to become a new creature. I say it all the time. You got to be born again. You got to become a new man, a new woman. If you're the same way all the time, that's where I've always been. You ain't, you playing around. Most likely going to destroy you. That's why I said, whoa, destruction to you. He's going to destroy you. No matter how you call yourself being in the truth, you ain't in no truth. You in your own truth, in your own mind, but you ain't in the truth as far as what it, what it takes to actually make it to see salvation. You playing around. A lot of you playing around, you're just going through formality. Like I say, outwardly, you act like right now you holding it down. Got the book open, you listen. It's a Sabbath. No sooner the Sabbath over, you going back to your wicked ways that you are. Just like everybody in the world. You better check, check yourself. You says, let's thou make a covenant with the inhabitants.